Thank you very much, Judge Marion Bullard Bennett. That was a very uh, insightful presentation, uh, insightful to uh, the dynamics that can be created when you begin to, as you say, look outside the box and begin to take a different approach. And so much of what you say rings so clear with uh, some of the presentations that have been made in the past and this, this morning, and I really feel that it links to what some of our panelists will, will have to offer. And if they have any inquiries to you, uh, they're more than welcome to come and do that. But I will begin with Brooke. And you want me to start with inquiries first? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm actually just curious, you mentioned time, um, and that it, for me is a large factor, is our systems are often um, time structured, so we have plans that we put in place for people that go for a very short period of time, or we have a discharge plan, or a, a recovery plan that seems to be quite time limited, and some of the people that I know, um, those plans may need to exist for their entire lives, so I'm wondering, you know, what how you kind of accomplish the idea of time. Okay, I, I knew there'd be one of those questions. <laughs> uh, I have uh, limits by law in terms of time, and I have to deal with those. I can't, although it's tempting, I, I can't exceed what the law lets me do. So that's yes. me answer your question. Just uh, for background's sake, um, I think I'm up here because I'm involved with the Community Wellness Court pilot project. Um, it's really a shame that Judge Ruddy wasn't able to be here because she is truly um, the maverick um, on this project. I'm a, I'm a really a, a newcomer to the, uh, the, the uh, folder, but uh, she would speak equally as passionately about her experiences with Community Wellness Court. And I know that one of the challenges, in community wellness court, people plead guilty. Now, is that the case in the First Nations court? Yes. Okay. And then sentencing occurs after they have finished what we call the wellness plan. And the similarities between what you're doing and what we're trying to do, are very, uh, they're very close. Um, and I know that one of the criticisms that the community wellness court has faced is that the involvement in the community wellness court is much, much longer than they would get for a typical sentence for the, the, the offense they've been involved in. So somebody shoplifting or somebody doing a, a theft under or whatever it is may get a short term of probation, but if they enter the community wellness court, they may be involved with us for 18 months or two years. And do you have any comment on that particular issue? I make it very clear from the outset. When people come into First Nations court, be it a family court matter or a criminal or youth court matter, that this is a very intensive court, that we all work very hard, and I expect the offender to work as, as hard as everyone else at their healing plan. If they're not prepared to do that, then go down the hall to a regular courtroom. They'll send you to jail, you can do your time, and walk out of the institution. And I respect that. But if you want to take a holistic approach to the issues you have in your life, you're welcome. But it isn't mandatory. You don't have to be here. It's only because you want to be here. I would just like to say um, that the Community Wellness Court got started in the Yukon because of the National Crime Prevention yeah. Center. I just didn't have any questions for her. No, I know. But I, I just think I would just like to publicly acknowledge that and that FASI is, um, is a very key partner to what we're doing as well. And partnership is much, much needed on this front. So thank you. You can say it. You don't really have to ask a question. You can say other things. I was just thinking about the, the around the community wellness court and uh, this passion that uh, 
remember Judge Ruddy speaking before she was judge and coming to federal council and selling package to the National Crime Prevention Center and uh, Mr. Cooley, the deputy minister, taking it to the highest levels in Ottawa, like our poor deputy minister at the National Crime Prevention Center was getting it from five different directions. So it showed that the passion throughout the entire area was just pervasive and uh, so much hard work and commitment went into the development of this project that it's... Uh, it, it was just amazing. It's the first one I've seen with that degree of scope at the beginning. I think for me, some that um, passion and the idea of collaboration speaks to um, what we need to change a system. Um, and that when we talk about systems, we're not talking about individuals. And oftentimes our programs uh, are set up to focus on an individual or a specific part of an individual. Um, and if we're going to actually think about how do we change systems, we actually need to see the system and not the individual. And to see that if we work collaboratively um, and across, I think, time. And the other thing that really spoke to me um, about what you said was that uh, that the voice of the person is is the most critical piece to that. Uh, that what they want to change in their life um, becomes part of how we change the system. We don't change the system by doing something to someone. So I, yeah, that was something that I appreciated. Thank you. Well, and I, and I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, the approach that we are taking in in much of what we do is an integrated approach, trying to. Um, be comprehensive, be holistic, and uh, involve other people, other stakeholders, other service providers, and not address the one issue that is presenting currently, but look at the whole picture and try and address the whole picture. So um, working together and being inclusive, we can accomplish much, much more than we ever have in isolation, I think. Are you going to talk with the court? Or? I'm sorry. I, I'm just <laughs> up here talking. Yeah. Talk. Do you want me to talk about the court a little bit? You sure can. Okay. Um, well, you've learned a little bit. I think its genesis came out of the, um, the, sorry, the Yukon Substance Abuse Plan. Um, I, I, I'm a fairly new person to the Yukon. I've only been here um, about 18 months, so some of this predates me. Um, but I think the genesis of the idea came from the Yukon Substance Abuse Plan, and we got funding for it about four years ago from NCPC. Four, yeah, something like that. Um, it was a it was a, a passion of Judge Ruddy's, and um, she worked uh, tirelessly to get it to a place where it is today. Um, it's a unique partnership between. Um, um, corrections, the judiciary, the defense, the RCMP, the Crown, health and social services. There are a lot of people um, around the table um, backing this court and, and trying to bring it to um, the vision, to, to achieve the vision that, that uh, was underlying its, its genesis. Um, we had pilot funding for three years, and now we've got an extension on that funding for another three years. The court is still growing, and we're still learning. Uh, it's got a full evaluation component attached to it, and we're certainly learning from um, the barriers, the bumps, the, the, uh, the, the successes, the challenges as we go along. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, so far, uh, we've had 66 clients referred to the court. Oh, and I should say the court, the, the, um, the people we're trying to target with this court are people who have substance abuse problems, mental health issues, or organic brain damage uh, issues, and, um, and people with specific challenges. Um, and like I said, you have to plead guilty. We develop a wellness plan that's part of it. And the wellness plan, as I said, is, is, takes a holistic look at the person's issues and what's brought them into contact with the justice system. 